Good evening. I'm Eliana Vaughn with WGOG News, and I'm outside of the Geek House, where the president of Geek World will make a statement about today's Geek Report podcast. Oh, it looks like he's ready. What's up, world? I'm your boy, your guy, Coach EV, a.k.a. EV the Geeker. And I would like to welcome you to another episode of the Geeker Report Podcast, where the geek meets the street. Now, on today's show, I have the pleasure of having a guest who has been a high-level athlete and now is a head coach at a prestigious black university located right down the street from the Geek House. Before I go any further, I need you, I mean, hit the like button, and I need you to subscribe to this great YouTube channel. Because unlike the presidents that have come before me, I intend to make the geek great again. Now, get your mind ready to receive this Geek, 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 geek. His name's the Geeker, the Geeker, the Geeker. His name's the Geeker, the Geeker, the Geeker. What's up, world? It's your boy, your guy, Coach EV, a.k.a. EV, the Geeker. And welcome to another episode of the Geeker Report podcast, brought to you by Tatum and Wade Law Firm. Tatum and Wade are serious lawyers who get serious results. But I say that if you want to get paid, you better go to Tatum and Wade. (laughs) Listen, I am as excited as I can be today because I have a legend on the show. Yes, he's a legend. He's from DeMatha High School where he was a Gatorade Player of the Year. He was a McDonald's All-American. He played at the illustrious Duke University under, they call him Coach K. He won a national championship as a player. He's been all over the world as an assistant. He's coached everywhere you can imagine. He also Listen to this, guys. He also owned a fashion accessory business where he sold bow ties called Sporting Styles. And now he is the head coach of the illustrious HBCU, Howard University. Please welcome to the show none other, the one and only Kenny Blakeney. What's up, KB? How you doing, my man? I just want to know, can I take that, bottle that up, and bring it with me everywhere I go? Because that may be the best job that anyone has ever, ever done introducing me. And thank you for the kind words. Oh, man, no problem. But you're a G for all that, Kenny. You know, we get out. I mean, get out to geek early, man. You, I mean, we're, this is not, you know, you act like we're D.C. I mean, that, that has to be the kindest word. Man, I'm just doing my job. So I'm just going to tell you right from the beginning, Jill G, you're geeking. And you know, and you know what here? I don't, you're the first um, high academic guy I've had on my show. So uh, I know that, you know, you, you coached in the Ivy League. You went to Duke. I mean, you went to prestigious DeMatha Catholic High School. So we're going to get like if you could keep the like the ten letter words down in this podcast, if possible. <laughs> I, mean, we, I would do my best. Okay, cool. I mean, because you know we don't have a dictionary. You know, we're not sponsored by Dictionary.com. You know, so we can you know like just pop up all of a sudden. So we're gonna try to you know uh, get that down. But again, thanks for coming. Here's what we'll do. I want to jump right in. Uh, because I value your time. You know, I know you may be meeting with somebody, and, and, you know, because Howard is in Washington, you may be meeting with a cabinet member, uh, the House of Representatives, you know, your Trump may go out to dinner. I mean, I don't know what's going on <laughs> next. You know, like you have a, a lunch with uh, Trump today because you're in D.C. So I just want, I'm just happy you're here, man. <laughs> so let, let's talk about, um, you know, I've been sharing this with a lot, all, giving a lot of people the opportunity to talk about this. With COVID-19 uh, going on, how has that affected 
what you've been doing, able to do in your, this is your second year at Howard. Uh, and also talk a little bit about that and then talk a little bit about obviously the racial tensions and all that different stuff that's going on this year uh, that's kind of shaped our nation uh, in 2020. So just- yeah. Well, yeah, well, thank you, E, I appreciate it. Uh, first and foremost, I think we had our last game on March 16th. Uh, we played North Carolina a and in the MEAC tournament and uh, had just lost to them. And uh, I think that night or that evening, you know, we had figured out that the Ivy League had canceled their tournament. The NBA had postponed their season. Um, we were just hearing rumblings and uh, seeing other leagues, uh, you know, cancel what they were, 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 uh, were doing at the time. So for us, you know, it was a little kind of unnerving because we didn't know what was exactly COVID meant for us here in America. Um, you know, and uh, our responsibility is to the players and, and to their families. Um, so we had traveled on the 16th from uh, North Virginia down back to D.C. Uh, and had dropped our guys off. And, uh, you know, the next thing I know, everything was shut down. So school was dismissed. Uh, all the tournaments, as I've mentioned, in the country were, were canceled. So it was a way for us, EV, we had to kind of, like gather our guys real quick and just dispense them home and make sure they were good, make sure they were safe. Uh, and that's kind of been my concern ever since. Um, it's kind of uh, interesting the question you asked, like, you know, some of the things we've done with our players, um, you know, during COVID, we've had a number of different initiatives that we've worked with as a program. Um, three in particular, one is we started a voter registration uh, drive with a, with a uh, Michelle Obama, Chris Paul, co-founded uh, organization called When We All Vote. And uh, When We All Vote is a nonpartisan voter registration uh, organization that is kind of, uh, the importance of it is to get young people out to vote. And one of the largest demographics with that in EV is that uh, our young black males are the uh, a huge void of a voter registration and getting out to vote. So by us being a, uh, a university, something that I think young men will appeal to if they follow, you know, Instagram, Twitter, social media, different things like that. Um, our young men are, are putting up on their Twitter, their Instagram, uh, information about voting. So that was one of the initiatives we put in. The second initiative was that we did a, uh, a fundraiser. Uh, for the student assistant fund at Howard University. And with that student assistant fund, when our students and athletes were uh, dispensed from, uh, from school uh, right around the 16th or 17th, a lot of those students um, weren't able to get home financially. So the university has a student, uh, student assistant fund where we did a three week fundraiser to contribute to that. Um, that fund contributes to students who were traveling, students that families might have uh, been challenged during, uh, during COVID, maybe someone lost a job, so maybe somebody was furloughed. Um, so those funds really reached to help our, our Howard community uh, a lot. And then the third thing we did is we implemented a, um, a speaker series. Uh, over the period of COVID so far, we've had about 22 speakers. And what that has done, EV, is it's allowed us to continue the conversation of things that are going on currently in our country. Um, we've had speakers from AT&T, the NBA PA, we've had an NBA owner, we've had a Major League Baseball owner, we've had so many brilliant uh, leaders and influencers that it's uh, allowed our players to kind of stay relevant with the times, uh, but also have conversations that are stimulating and engaging uh, for them for life, but also during this uh, period of social unrest and COVID in our country. That's awesome. Uh, you said, um, you know, voter registration, that's very interesting. You know, I've heard people doing that. You talked about student assistant, people getting uh, the help. There is a lot of people, you know, kids were being displaced on, on campuses and, you know, it was a shock to everyone. So that's awesome that you were able to uh, do that. But then you said a speaker series, you know, you talked about all the different people that you brought in. And I'm just trying to, 22 of them, you said, I'm trying to figure out 
you know, I haven't gotten a call yet. <laughs> but here's, I, on a serious note, the person I'm telling you, you have to have, Kenny, I'm very serious, and I'm telling every coach that I talk to, you have to have a young man that I interviewed last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, Austin Hatch. He's a two-time plane crash survivor, played at University of Michigan uh, with John Beeline. I used to work him out. He has a phenomenal, phenomenal story. You got to bring him on, man, to talk to your kids because uh, it, it's one of the most, he's one of the most motivational individuals I know. So just to throw that out there, you know, uh, you know, just to remind. And then if you want to get somebody like the Geeker on, I have some things up my sleeve too. You know, I'm not, you know, again, I'm not Michelle Obama, <laughs> you know, and the people that you used to have, but, you know, I could share some wisdom, you know. We got to see if your schedule's uh, open, man. We, we know you got to pull uh, a full schedule, man, with all the podcasts and all the amazing things you're doing, so. <laughs> there you we'll go. Check, <laughs> we'll check with your personal assistant, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, I want to go into um, – a segment that we here we call what's your geek and what's your geek deals with uh what is it talk to us about kenny blakeney talk, talk to us who kenny blakeney is and this portion of the show is brought to you by fahrenheit graphics and sweet mary k photography so tell us what is your geek talk to us about your high school career you know do playing nash championship all the way through selling some 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 fashion accessories yeah, well, I, you know, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I, I born and raised in Washington D.C. The youngest of three. Uh, you know, my mom was a grocery store clerk at a grocery chain called Safeway, and uh, she worked there for 35 years as a clerk. God bless her and uh, all the wonderful things she did for for me and my my siblings. Um, she's one of my best friends. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a mama's boy. Um, you know, so when I grew up in D.C. Coach EV, it was, uh, you know, the early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s is DC was heavy. And uh, what I mean by heavy is that it was kind of the, the murder capital of the world at that point in time. And uh, being an inner city guy, I had choices and options. Uh, go to school and stay, you know, stay out of the way, keep my nose clean and do sports as an activity to kind of help me through this, uh, those challenging times or go to route of the streets. And, uh, you know, my route was always through education and sports. And that was something that was really helpful for me. Um, you know, there's an a old saying that talks about how it takes a community or a village to raise a, raise a kid. And, it, you know, that's, that's 100% true in my case. I was very fortunate and lucky to have boys club coaches, uh, you know, police officers uh, at the boys club, uh, guys at the recreation uh, department were were great mentors to me and you know so that was kind of uh, the first step of my, my my starting the basketball stuff a little bit uh, was you know in DC playing with older guys getting my butt kicked every day um, being told I couldn't shoot almost like when I played with you uh, for a couple of weeks with, with the fury D didn't allow me to shoot um, so it was <laughs> you know it was one of those kind of situations but it was good because it taught me it taught me accountability and responsibility, right? It, it didn't, uh, I, I wasn't able to kind of get out there and just do whatever I wanted to do. I, I was taught how to win uh, at an early age. And this is like 10, 11, 12 years old playing with men. Uh, and I was able to take that and kind of progress through the game a little bit. I was very lucky and fortunate to attend a math Catholic high school uh, where I played for coach Morgan Wooten. And uh, you know, what a, lucky opportunity that was for for me in my life uh you know it, it changed me Evie because you know I'm an inner city DC guy and I'm I'm going to a a public uh, a Catholic school out in Hyattsville Maryland uh where I got you know one of the most revered high school coaches or coaches in the, in, in in the history of the game as my coach um and I caught him at a great time he was a little bit older um but still sharp as a as a tech you know, and really helped me, I think, grow as a person first and foremost. Um, you know, being in a, growing up as an inner city kid, you, you, you know, there's, there's, you know, you're a little bit of a, a latchkey kid. And, uh, you know, with a mom that had a full-time job and working overtime, uh, my brother and sister are older, 
I was kind of that kid that just kind of had to find my way a little bit. And DeMatha and Coach Wooten certainly helped me with that. Um, I wouldn't be here talking to you today if it wasn't for DeMatha and Coach Wooten. So I'm awfully grateful for that. I played three years on the varsity. Um, so as a sophomore, I was a little bit of a, a role guy, a rotation guy. And then I started my junior and senior year. Um, had a chance to play with some great teammates and Gerard Mustaf, who was a, a draft pick by the, I think, New York Knicks. Um, Ted Jeffries played at Virginia. Rod Bellanis from Notre Dame as an assistant coach. He played at Georgia Tech. Uh, Reggie Vini played at uh, North Carolina Wilmington. I had Poncho Hodge that played at Col Colorado. Uh, Derek Chandler that played at Nebraska. So we had a team that was, uh, was loaded for those two years. And uh, like I said, I was just lucky to, to play a small role um, with those guys and, and have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, from that, I uh, had a chance to attend Duke University. And uh, my first year, I was a, a red shirt in 91. So uh, with my red shirt year, I got to participate in all the practices. I traveled to all the games, um, did all the things I, I that a, a teammate would do. I just didn't have a chance to play in the games. Um, and uh, with that, we were national champions in 91. Uh, so my eligibility clock started in 92. That was my first year playing and, uh, you know, was part of a back-to-back -back championship team at Duke um, where we had a chance to play against the, the Indianas and the Michigans and, you know, Kansas and, it was just a great run, uh, achieving those goals. And uh, came back, 94, our team went to the Final Four where we played against Arkansas. Scotty Thurman hit a shot uh, close near the buzzer to, uh, to win that for them. Uh, and then my graduating year was the class of uh, 95 where uh, our Duke team, Coach K, uh, wasn't able to be with us for part of the year uh, because of a, a back injury that he sustained. And uh, it was a pretty challenging and tough year for us. So that's kind of the, the part of the basketball. After 95, I came out and had you cut me with the Fort Wayne Fury. Wouldn't let me shoot, wouldn't let me do anything. And then you cut me and sent me back home. Uh, and I had an opportunity to go play in New Zealand. Uh, but instead of playing, I, I jumped into coaching, which I think was the smart thing because I, was, I wasn't a good player. So... Uh, jumped into coaching and I've been in coaching off and on for the last uh, 25 years. I had an eight year out where I started a clothing line uh, of accessories. I made ties, scarves, uh, socks, ponchos, uh, hats, uh, a number of different accessory items uh, for Major League Soccer, uh, the NBA, the NHL, uh, NASCAR. I've done the Macy's Day per, uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade, uh, work with uh, uh, Dave Matthews band. So, um, had a, had a really nice run with that. Um, but I had the itch to get back into coaching, like a lot of dudes who get out of coaching and get back in. So, um, now I'm back in coaching and the head coach at Howard university. Wow. That's awesome. That's an amazing story. Uh, Kenny, because you have so much, you know, for young, especially our young black and African-American young men to come from the inner city uh to get a chance to go to a private you know high school uh where you you know was playing obviously with all those great players and you know i like how you just flipped the geek and talked about you were just a role player you were a mcdonald's all-american i mean i don't know any role players that make mcdonald's all-american but I, okay whatever your geek is you want you know you highlight everybody else and then you just forgot to tell us oh by the way my senior year i was the mcdonald's all-american let, let me ask you this, though. This, this kind of parlays into where I want to go. Being a McDonald's All-American, being the guy, being one of the guys, you know, obviously with all those players you had, there were other guys on the team. But you, let's, let's not take it away, you were Gatorade Player of the Year, which you failed to mention, but that's okay. And you were a McDonald's All-American who had, I'm sure – 20, 30 high major schools that wanted you. Am I correct? That is correct. You choose Duke and you go redshirt. Like, what's your, like, when kids now, you know, now it's, it's, it's this big deal going on how um, it's a big deal going on around the country now 
uh, five stars looking at HBCUs now that you coach, that you, you're the head coach of an HBCU. Looking back, if you had to do it all over again, being a uh, five-star player, McDonald's All-American, uh, would you consider a Howard University uh, coming from DeMatha now that you've coached at Ohio University and HBCU? Would you consider that? I think if I was to coach at Howard, yeah, I would consider that as a player, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good I like that. <laughs> I think I could convince myself to go to Howard. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, EV, one of the things that, uh, that, you know, was, is kind of like a, a, a narrative in DC DMV area. We call it the DMV, the District Maryland and Virginia. Um, one of the, the narratives with the DMV is that um, Howard has never done a great job of recruiting DMV players. Okay. Um, and DMV players have a, a narrative that, you know, Howard hasn't been 100% serious about athletics. Um, everybody knows that, you know, Howard is well renowned for, for its academic prowess, right? And with that, you know, how serious can, can Howard be about athletics? And I think they were very serious with hiring me. Um, so, you know, just to answer your question, when I was coming up, I don't know if I got a letter from Howard. Um, I don't know if I got letters or, or interest coming from an HBCU. Um, yeah, so it, it, I, like I said, if I was recruiting me, I would be able to get me. Um, but I, you know, I can't, I can't recruit myself and, and coach myself and, and, and do all the other stuff. But um, no, it, it, I, I think it's a, a great opportunity for a lot of young men. Um, HBCUs provide a, a community uh, and a brotherhood and a fellowship that um, PWIs don't provide. Um, it provides a security that PWIs don't provide. It provides a, uh, an education and culture that PWIs don't provide. So, um, you know, I think more student athletes should take interest and take uh, sincere looks at HBCUs. And I think as HBCUs, we have to understand that we have an opportunity in the moment. Uh, and what are we going to do with that opportunity in the moment? Well, you know, it's been reported and we know that uh, you can't specifically uh, talk about it and that's fine, but we're, you know, it's already about in the, uh, the airwaves that you're getting a five-star potentially NBA uh, type player in 611 Mercure Maker, who I think is the cousin of Fawn Maker. And um, do you think that this is a trend that will begin to now that he's you know the imminent you know signing uh, of him he's not signed yet but he's gonna sign but anyway uh do you think that that's gonna be a real trend that starts in the in the HBC, hbcu five stars really looking at the hbcu well I, I think five stars are considering and looking at it um we were able to have a young man josh christopher on our campus this year he eventually signed with uh, Arizona State. Um, but we had a great visit with him, with his family. We had another young man who's a, a five-star guy that uh, I guess has been in well-publicized in the papers about his intentions um, that I can't comment on. Um, but, you know, yeah, it, it, I think it can be a trend. But um, can it be also something that um, should be the norm? I, and I think so. Um, you know, black, black kids should go to black schools and be educated black. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I think that when people start to, you know, insinuate, like, you know, that a young man is taking a look at an HBCU, like it's almost a discount. And uh, there's nothing that we, we feel like our university is discounted or on or a university that's in the dirt. Um, as has been reported by somebody talking about HBCUs. HBCUs are educational platforms that have existed for over 250 years uh, that gave people that look like yourself and me an opportunity to get education, a college or university education when the PWIs didn't allow it. So for anyone to ever insinuate that a HBCU is something that is from the dirt, um, they, need to, they need to do a little bit of homework and research and come visit Howard University to understand what a beautiful campus. Uh, we have beautiful black 
uh, educated young men and women that walk our campuses and a history and a tradition that we will put up against any university in the country. So that is why, you know, with that being said, you know, you, uh, you know, obviously I knew you basically when I was an assistant coach at the Fort Wayne Fury, so I didn't. And you uh, cut me. I wasn't the one that was fully responsible for cutting you. And as I recall. You had input. Yes, I definitely did. And I was just thinking, man, Kenny Blake, you can't shoot outside of 10 feet. You know, you shot that little floater. You had that nice get to the mid range. You know, you had that mid range, but, you know, you just, I just didn't see you hit the, you know, the, or able to hit, shoot the ball with range, you know, but that's neither here nor there now. <laughs> you know, I was, you know, at that time, but that's just what I saw. You was tough, athletic, but just couldn't shoot the ball well enough. And, and if I, you know, but I can't expect, and, and part of it is, uh, I'm such a great shooter, and I just, you know, I, I probably looked at it and just out of the wrong lens there. You know, I can't expect you to shoot like me, Steph, and Clay, and people like that. So I, I, I don't know what I'm You guys are, are in existence these days, man. <laughs> so, but let, let me, um, you know, you coached, you've coached such at a wide place, you know, the James Madisons, uh, Seton Hall, you've done a little lot, but then the other piece of it, you were an Ivy League coach, and I remember when you, you know, we had a, a more dealings at Harvard uh, when I tried to get you to get Reggie Hearn. Uh, I thought I'd throw that out there again since you want to throw the cut. I mean, I said, Kenny, you're going to be calling me about Reggie Hearn a year later, and you did, and you did. You and Tommy Amaker, we're going to throw Tommy out there too. We ain't going to let you just take it by yourself. And Reggie Hearn goes on to be a 1,000 points for Northwestern and has played my league, but that's neither here nor there. But, um, and you went to coach, you know, you came back and coached at Columbia. What made you, you know, what, why, why an HBCU, you know, what made you want to coach at an HBCU? Because let me just say this. Usually what happens is when guys, and you didn't really fit this mold. So when guys eventually coach at an HBCU, it's like almost at the end of their career, or they can't get another job. It's the death of their career almost. What made you, you know, want to coach at HBCU? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I, I wanted to be there. I, I fought really hard for that job. Um, I think what made me wanted to be at, at Howard was that it was Howard, um, that it had a rich history and tradition. Uh, it had a Supreme Court justice and Thurgood Marshall uh, attend. Uh, Kamala Harris, who is the, the senator from California, uh, who ran for president, and hopefully she is our next vice president. Um, it had Chaswick Bozeman, had Taraji P. Henson, had Andrew Young, it had David Dinkins. I can go down the list of wonderful and accomplished alums that have walked on the campus of, of Howard that as black people, we stand on the shoulders of today. Um, their accomplishments and their achievements have paved the way for us to have the liberties and the freedoms uh, that we have and that we continue to fight for um, to have equally with everyone else in this country. So it was, a, uh, it was one of those things where I, I, I got it and I understood what Howard was about. Um, I understood what the brand was about. And, and part of that was working at a Harvard University, um, working for Tommy Amaker. When he got the job at Harvard, you know, I was uh, lucky enough to be on the staff and not recruit Reggie Hearn. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he was a guy that, that really built that program uh, out of nothing. It was a D3 kind of low D1 program when he got the job. Um, the resources that were there uh, weren't used in athletics. Um, it sounded, the story sounds a lot similar to Howard's situation. More academics, no, no, um, no, nothing in terms of the, uh, the athletics, in terms of stressing athletics or making athletics important. And Tommy uh, built that place where the university now feels that athletics is a huge part of the student athletes or the students' experience. Uh, you know, for, for Tommy at, at, Howard, at Harvard, he gets more black students at his game than any other activity or organization that can go on on that campus. So the value that he's bringing to that university, um, the experiences that he's giving the students, not only the student athletes, 
is 100% invaluable. And I see that and I, I want to do the same thing at, at Howard. Um, we have a great brand. We have great academics. We have a great history and tradition. Why can't we be a great basketball program? So um, understanding how he built that, working at Under Armour as a, uh, in the sports marketing uh, division for four years as a consultant, all of those things really uh, gave me a better perspective of what Howard means, what the brand means, and how to position and use that brand uh, to build a basketball program. Awesome. Take us through, you know, you just finished your first year, and obviously as far as a record goes, it was tough. It was a tough year by any stretch of, you know, it, it was tough. It was your first year, you know, you got in. It wasn't, you know, as people say, your players per se that you actually recruited in. You, you know, you're trying to change a culture. Uh, you finished 4-29. Uh, and 29. Uh, Tell us uh, about your first year at Howard and uh, some of the ups and downs and and, and some of the positives as well. Yeah. Well, when I was hired, I was the second to last Division One hire in the country. Um, and by the time I got hired, we had 50 points either graduate or transfer out of the program. And there was no convincing the, that 50 points to come back. Um, that ship had sailed, and it was time to kind of rebuild. And in the rebuilding process, I was able to get five or six freshmen, uh, at a late notice, uh, one in particular, Wayne Bristol Jr. ended up being the MEAC Rookie of the Year. Uh, like you, being a shooter, you would appreciate this. As a freshman, he averaged 12 points a game, shot 40% excuse me, from the three-point line, 50% field goals overall, and 80% from the free throw line. Um, so to get a young man that played 30 minutes a game, averaged 12 points, and have stats like that, um, I said, it's, it's a real testament, I think, to him, but also to uh, my staff. Um, you know, Eric Atkins, Jake Brown, Tyler Thornton, a couple of those names people may know. Eric played at Notre Dame, uh, was a starter there for several years. Tyler played at Duke, was a starter there. Uh, Jake Brown played at Middlebury and was a hell of a player in his right uh, at Middlebury. So we have a young staff. They're 25, 20, 28, and 28. And, uh, you know, we do, uh, I think, a great job with player development stuff. Um, you know, so with saying that, um, you know, for me, it was, Coach, it was one of those years where I needed to lay down the foundation. And there were just some things that were uh, not going to be permitted. And, fun, like, you had to be fundamentally sound to play for me. You had to be able to dribble, uh, pass, and shoot had to be able to play out of the triple threat. And regardless of who that person was, if they couldn't do that, um, you know, I wasn't going to play him. I wasn't going to play a guy that just ran up and down the court, uh, looked great in the layup line, but, you know, would dribble the ball and kick it out of bounds or dribble the ball and, and throw it out of bounds in the stands. Um, so I wanted to teach our guys uh, from the jump, like this is the way that, our, that we need to play. And, uh, and stick with it. And by the middle of the year, you know, I'm starting two walk-ons. Um, and I started those two walk-ons because they, not that they were better than the other guys, but they would do exactly what I needed them to do um, in order for us to move the needle with our program. And, you know, I, I like the progress that we made. I really didn't pay attention to the record. And I didn't even know our record until Stephen A. Smith was clowning me on first take one day talking about four and 29. Um, so the record wasn't important. Um, I got a five-year deal, so I'm not worried about my record my first year. And I don't think my AD and president were, were, were worried about that either. Um, the, the thing that I wanted to see is our team, like, take steps every day and get better. And pretty much for probably, like, around 95% of the season, I think we did take small steps and we got better. Our basketball IQ got better. Our field for the game got better. Our passing got better. Um, our shooting percentage. We were one of the top 100 three-point shooting teams in the country. Um, and so I'm really proud of all of those things we're able to do uh, in the first year, though the results didn't really um, end up as, as, you know, for in the win column. I think we were winning by taking small steps and building and growing the program. How do you, uh, this year, as far as uh, some of the recruits, can you talk about some of the people that you have signed? And, you know, this is your first uh, recruiting class. So 
talk to us a little bit about the up incoming uh, student athletes that you have coming to Howard this year and the impact you feel they're going to have on your team this year. Yeah, we, we have a big recruiting class and uh, I may forget a guy or two because it's so big. We, we're bringing in 10 guys. Mm. Uh, so we, um, yeah, we're bringing in 10 guys and just some of the key guys. We have a young man um, that redshirted last year. Um, great story about him. His name is Steve Settle. Uh, Steve is a DeMatha guy. And when he entered DeMatha as a ninth grader, he was 5'9". When he graduated four years later, he was 6'9". Wow. So, yeah, we, we were able to get him. And now he's 6'11", close near 7 feet. And, uh, but when he graduated high school, he weighed 150 pounds. So a lot of people were afraid of, uh, of his body type. And what I did is I, I said, Steve, you, if you come to Howard this year, um, you know, I will, I will build your body up, but I also will develop you. So I played him at the point guard on the second team all year. So I had a 6'11 kid running point guard for me on the second team. Um, understanding that, you know, he's going to be a year at that position. He's going to get more comfortable uh, with the ball. He'll get more comfortable with his decision makings and how that will escalate our team and make our team better once he's eligible. Um, so Steve will be a freshman. Um, you know, we have a 6'10 young man, Jordan Wood, from out of San Antonio, Texas, coming in. Uh, he's a guy that can play the 2, 3, 4, uh, and maybe some 5, 4, so that's 6'10. Um, a, light, a lot like Steve Settle, who can play the, the one, 1 through 5, 4. Um, Jordan can play probably the 1 through 4, 4. Um, so we have a lot of interchangeable parts. He can really shoot the ball. Um, and for me, at that position, um, he's a guy that can really pass it also. So we're excited about him. We have a couple transfers coming in. Um, one, Isaac Suffering from Lafayette, um, 6'4 combo guard that's really skilled, athletic. Um, a young man from my high school, uh, Devin, who's 6'4, went to Howard County Community College, um, was under-recruited at DeMatha, um, had great grades, uh, almost a 4-0 at DeMatha, went to, uh, went to uh, Howard County Community College, got recruited again. And, uh, you know, we're excited about him. Super athletic, can score the ball. Uh, so Devin Richardson. Uh, we have a young man out of uh, Baltimore, Ra Ra Ali, uh, Raheem Ali, out of Poly High School. He would have been the only four-time state champion in the history of uh, Baltimore Public School if, uh, if COVID didn't uh, suspend their season, stop their season. So we have him coming in. Uh, so I really enjoy and like our team that's coming in, EV. I think it's going to give us a chance to, to kind of, uh, you know, take some steps forward in this upcoming season. Well, Coach, I just, you know, as we get ready to come to a close, I, you know, I just have to say now, I mean, I mean, that sounds exciting. I mean, two 6'11 guys who can play the one through the four. I love the versatility. You talk about the other guys. So now I got to ask you, like I asked everybody else. And so you geeked us on, the, you know, you didn't even know the record was 4 and 29. And that's cool. I'm with that geek. I mean, you, <laughs> whatever your geek is, that's what the geek is all. It's all just a geek. So you're going to get, I mean, I'm going to accept that, Kenny. And I'm, I'm not tripping, you know, but, you know, I like the fact that you got better every day. I mean, I love all of that. <laughs> I love it. Hey, 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 coach, you start you start losing 10, 12 in a row, you just forget she just forget stuff, right? <laughs> like you, you really won't think about it. You're just like, oh, I, I don't want to know our record. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to know our record. I just know we're getting our butts kicked every game. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I like that. But now let's go ahead. I need – because, see, I don't believe in locker room material. Because if you ask me if I'm going to win and I really feel I can, I'm going to say, yeah, I believe we can win. This year – what can we expect? How is, can we expect an increase, a better year from Howard this year? I'm putting you on the spot. That's just part of the geek. Can you tell me this year is no doubt in your mind you, you, you see yourself winning more than four games this year? I think this year will tell us what we done and accomplished during the offseason and, and during last year, to be honest with you. And that's, that, that's where our work is going to show. Um, did we do a good job of getting our players from A to Z last year, right? Did we do a good job of identifying the right recruits to help 
uh, I think, grow our program from a four-win program to what it can be uh, next year. Yeah, I think we're going to be really good. I, I do think we're going to be really good. Um, I do think that our youth and uh, inexperience can probably in some areas show uh, more than others. But I do think we have a chance to be good because we have, we have eight guys, EV, that I think can shoot anywhere between 30 to 42, 43% from the three-point line. Um, and we have some players that, I, you know, if you double off of, um, we think that we can burn you. We play a unique defense. Um, we play some, some zone. Uh, last year we played a lot of zone. And uh, with that length, I think we'll have a chance to be even more e efficient and effective in that zone. So I'm excited about the upcoming year. Yeah, I do think we're going to have better results than last year. Um, what those results are, I, I, I don't know. But I, know, I, do, I do know we'll be better uh, this year, upcoming season, than we were last year. Cool. Fair. Man, I appreciate you, Kenny Blakeney. I mean, that's awesome. I am so happy, man. Again, I had somebody of your caliber on my show. I mean, I'm just as excited. I'm still as excited as I was in the beginning. I mean, even at the end here. And uh, I just want to know if you have any closing words, man, that you want to just you know, share with people something that you may not have said that you'd like to share with us as we, you know, end this portion of the show. Yeah, I, I you know, the big thing is, is like, look, I'm a, I'm a dreamer, right? And I kind of dreamed myself from, you know, 4th and Missouri Avenue, uh, you know, two or three blocks away from one of the most dangerous neighborhoods during the area that I grew up, right? I dreamed of, uh, you know, going to DeMatha, you know, going to Duke, University was a dream of mine. Um, now being the head coach at Howard is a dream of mine. So I, I believe in dreaming. I believe in having ideas and thoughts that are outside of one's comforts and limits. And, uh, you know, I just encourage everybody. I know that it can be tough. Um, the light at the end of the tunnel may not be as bright all the time. But if you keep dreams and having ambition in your life, uh, along with a spiritual side, I really think that those things are, are, are uh, part of the equation that when those things ignite, that's when dreams come reality. That's awesome, man. Again, thanks again, Kenny. I appreciate you, man, and the, the awesome words. And i tell you this, man, if a kid, uh, I, the, you know, you guys, I'm excited about your team. I'm going to definitely, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm going to check out a game. And so, you know, nothing online. If I'm definitely in the D.C. area, because I, I just think that with all this going on, it's only going to probably be conference games. I'm going to definitely try to check it out. So I appreciate man, that, I man. appreciate yeah. you for coming on. And, uh, man, God bless you. And I pray that you guys have a great year. Thank you, Evie. I appreciate you, man. You're doing an awesome job. I love being on your show. All right. Thank you.